This is Florida Gulf Coast University. It is 2022. The blackout of 2012 presented us with many challenges, and we now face another one. We know who is responsible for the global EMP attack. Super intelligent robots. Welcome to the singularity, and good luck. This course is uh, Themes in the Humanities course. And the theme that we focus on is apocalyptic themes in the humanities. This is a 140 student course. We have four professors that teach the class and each professor takes a unit of the course where they focus on their apocalyptic theme. On day one of the class, we have them divided into 12 different tribes. And these are the groups of people that they're left with after the first apocalyptic scenario happens. We do breakout sessions where we have four scenarios. Should we let them help us out? at the cost of sharing resources with the robots. They have offered to share all their digitized information with all the humans. They have to implant transmitters and receivers within us. All the tribes have to agree to this. I did an issue of robot rights, so should we consider robots to be humans? It gets students thinking about rights issues in general. What does it mean to be human and so forth? This is not a class where we're teaching you to prepare for the apocalypse, but it's really the idea that when we think about the robot apocalypse or robots becoming super powerful entities and all of a sudden they demand rights, that's not a question of, oh no, do we give robots rights? It's a question of, let's sit back and think what rights are in the first place. And I think the issue we should talk about is if I'm not considered a human, would I be considered second class? I think that they should be treated as humans in the aspect that if they do something wrong, they should be punished as humans, but they shouldn't be given like the status as a human because they're not. So you're saying that like they're separate but equal, but you still want to use them as a labor force. Sam Walsh, our first professor, focuses on war. Andrew Wilkinson focuses on time travel and resource issues. We're thinking we could go back in time, pre-EMP, to save the planet. So we can only send three people back, and the mission would be to destroy robot technology before the robots became self-aware. Our resources are being depleted. We don't have a future ahead of us. So like the option is either go back and get rid of the robots altogether, or just Kind of die off. Tries been sent back may drastically alter the present, creating worse scenarios or erode the present entirely. When we're fighting for survival and our quality of life is that low anyways, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be afraid to risk it now. Ten no's and two yes. We are not using the time machine. And Miles Mancini does the ever popular zombie apocalypse. We think about disease and death all the time. What if a plague wipes out everyone, but not just wipes them out, changes humanity, changes society? What if the dead stop saying dead? But most of the authors will say, the creators will say, it's not really about zombies. You're missing the point if you think that the zombie story is really just about zombies. The issue that we have with the zombie narrative are these, these ethical choices that we have to make. How do you survive? What are the rules that you follow to survive? That's always an interesting aspect of the zombie narrative. We have created robot tribes and we have created zombie tribes so that we inject different interests. And I should add, that that's really the focus of this course. When you're reading H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds and the aliens take over, it's a metaphor for how humans treat other humans. And so that's really what we're trying to do. When Sam Walsh talks about war, is he seriously considering the EMP attack happening? Maybe to some extent, but more so he's considering why do we have wars? We have selected five of the most outstanding films from our class. Twelve films were submitted. Only five made the final cut. Do you have any idea what's going on? My car is dead, my iPhone's dead, there's absolutely nothing. Everything's out. This course is super exciting. Students are into it. I was talking to a student on the way back from the debate and I asked her if she talks about this course with her roommates and she said that's all they talk about. If it's capturing students in that way and if we're able to teach them critical thinking and able to teach them problem solving skills, teach them the idea that there's difference in this world. Not everybody sees issues in the same way that you do and we're doing it using a fun scenario based learning strategy then that's really the number one thing about teaching this course.